Everywhere is Wonderland, everywhere is life. In Auntie's rubber got her band. As in the whole wide land, everywhere obscurity, the child becomes a father. Not much later, maybe five minutes later, ends the strife, everywhere eternity. Blowing softly on a snail makes him shrink into his shell. Dropped in cognac mixed with ice lets him think he saw white mice. I was suspicious that this comic got too tight, anxious that his author maybe gets crunched eventually under the weight of his own ambition. And of course, there was enough reason to be afraid that this could happen. But Jason Lutz never fell into that trap. His brilliant comic that I have the privilege to hold here in his entirety in my hands never fails to give us breaks, atmosphere, or just brilliant little ideas like the poem of Joachim Ringelnatz, Joachim Ringelnatz. In the beginning, Ringelnatz is one of my favorite German poets and his wonderful Dadaistic sense for absurdity is exactly the right voice to comment on the craziness of Berlin at the end of the 1920s. Berlin, Jason Lutz, Magnum Opus, who worked 22 years on that book. He started it when he was 28 years and now that it got finished and published by Drawn and Quarterly, he's 50 years old. So it's one of the little wonders of this book that it's not falling apart into fragments, that it feels and breathes like an unity. Like Lutz, I'm 50 now, and I'm a German, that's no surprise to you, I guess. And I was born in Berlin, the former West Berlin, to be precise. And even though my parents moved into a less exciting place back in the day, and I've never really lived in Berlin since, I still feel emotionally attached to that city. So maybe this explains to a degree why Berlin from Jason Lutz is so overwhelming for me. I don't want to set your expectations too high that you may are disappointed when you read it for yourself, but you should read it. And frankly, I don't believe there will be any disappointments because this book here is a masterwork. The last comic that got me that much excited was My Favorite Thing is Monsters, and I guess it will be a close finish between Berlin and Monsters, given that part two of that one will come out this year as well. It will be a close finish who will become eventually my comic of 2018. Or rather, it's more best of all time stuff, like My Favorite Thing is Monsters, actually. Yeah, it's really that good, not because both are related to the darker parts of German history, which is kinda interesting, kinda not actually, because I feel a bit overfed with information and stories about that time. This may sound horrible, but to be honest, another book about that time really has to convince me that it tells me something new before I want to read it. On the other hand, Jason Lutz Berlin shows to an alarming degree the similarities between the late 1920s Germany and the actual political moment we are in. Almost all over the world right-wing chauvinism rears its ugly head. I don't think I have to spell it out for you. You can do the conclusions, these comparisons for yourself, wherever you are, unfortunately. Racism, populism, intolerance. To confront and to overcome these dark currents has been become more and more important, not to say frightening or seemingly impossible the last couple of years. But the comic never tries too obviously to give us this lecture. To come up with that kind of conclusion is inevitable anyway, but Jason Lutz shows us the importance of that time for our time by deeply rooting the story within the specific historic setting. The whole story is saturated with historic effects and details in terms of characters and events that he almost effortlessly blends into his own narrative. Berlin is the story of Marte, 
A young woman that came to Berlin to study art. Tries to survive on her own and has some love adventures. She's a bit of a blank slate, or rather a leaf that is blown through the narrative. She's confronted with the cultural currents and isms of that time. The political arguments and all that. But despite her love adventures, she stays a bit of an outside visitor. A stand-in for us readers. But Berlin is also the story of Kurt, Anna, Sylvia, Otto, Abraham. Oh, please allow me to pronounce this for once in German. It's the story of Kurt, Anna, Sylvia, Otto, Abraham, Irvin, Margarete, Karl, and a quite huge cast of characters that is more or less connected in a wonderful, intricate narr narrative that Jason Lutz plotted all through the years to show Germany's descent into nazism, or do you say nazism? Anyhow. And he shows us this past and bygone world of the 1920s Berlin in all its colors. Not only how the political confrontations got off the rails and got divided into an extreme left and the extreme nationalists, but also the blossoming of tolerance and culture, the roaring twenties that seemed to offer a breathing room for the people. It was in more than just one way a fascinating world, given that you could afford it or were lucky enough to be able to partake, while others just had to deal with poverty, social injustice and or post-war traumatic stress disorders, or we nowadays would call it. Unlike My Favorite Thing is Monsters, Berlin is told in a very traditional drawing style or um, narration style. Lutz obviously learned a lot from Hergé, but he emulated it for his own purposes in a very clever way. Speaking of clever, Scott McCloud came to my mind more often than twice. Not only because of this emulated Ligny Claire style, but because of how Lutz uses the medium in a clever way, but never in a gimmicky way always serving the purpose of the story. For an example, there are two panels with a woman whispering into a man's ear, connecting two points in the story, or the two panels in which a Protestant screams through a window pane, or when the American jazz musicians first see the poster that's advertising their own concerts. All the way, Lutz recalls, for instance, the Belgian artist Franz Mazarier, not only by some of his panels, but literally as a reference in the story itself. And here's a scene uh, that impressed me quite a bit as well. Um, there's this uh, girl here who was saved by a homeless guy um who who is a jew and she's been told that jews have horns so uh, she's a bit afraid of that uh, assumption so she asks him where are your horns well look too close you dare not and she makes a bit of fun of her and then they both laugh because of the ridiculousness of this assumption but Look for yourself, I mean. It was one of the moments where this story here really got me, overwhelmed me, because uh, this is so poignant. You can see that this, of course, and I see it as a foreshadowing of the, yeah, of the events to come. It's 1920, 1929, um, and yeah. So without words, there's so much told in, in these, on these pages here. I could go on and on about how wonderful this comic is in terms of comics about history and in particular the history of the early 20th century. 
it's up there with some of Jack Targhee's comics and definitely not below Art Spiegelman's mouse. Thanks for listening and watching. Goodbye. Überall ist Wunderland, überall ist Leben. Bei meiner Tante im Strumpfenband, wie irgendwo daneben. Überall ist Dunkelheit, Kinder werden Väter. Fünf Minuten später stirbt sich was für einige Zeit. Überall ist Ewigkeit. Wenn du einen Schneck behauchst, schrumpft er ins Gehäuse. Wenn du ihn in Kognak tauchst, 